The Combine's here. We have so much better of an idea of what teams are actually going after these prospects, where these guys are probably going in the NFL draft than we did a month ago. So I'm going to give you all an updated 2024 mock draft coming out from with the first pick podcast this is a cbs article and we are going to be looking at it from a dynasty perspective and if these guys were to find themselves in these landing spots with this draft capital where am i going to be taking them now a couple different twists that we have with this video first i'm going to be giving y'all a super flex and one quarterback version so make sure you stay till the end and second we are going to be including the updated las vegas sportsbook betting odds of each one of these guys and their landing spot so for example Caleb. Williams is going to be my 101 in a super flex draft. And if you look at his updated Las Vegas sportsbook odds, he is minus 900 to be a Chicago bear. He's plus 300 to be a commander. He's plus 1700 to be a Patriot and plus and 20 to one to be an Atlanta Falcon. So pretty much we know that yes, Caleb Williams is a Chicago bear at this point. It's already priced in and y'all have heard me talk about this time and time again, but nonetheless, I am actually like this Chicago Bears landing spot in comparison to what y'all are used to seeing with number one overall quarterback draft picks. If we go through recent history, let's look at what these guys typically step into. Because if you're drafted at the number one overall pick, nine times out of 10, it's a horrendous team and probably the worst team in the league. We go to 2023, uh, Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young. He's thrown to a 33-year-old Adam Thielen and DJ Chark. 2021, you had Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars throwing to, I mean, a 31-year-old Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chenault. Going back to 2020, you had Joe Burrow with rookie season T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. 2019, you had Kyler Murray with 36-year-old Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk. 2018, you had Baker with Jarvis and Antonio Callaway. And in 2016, you had Jared Goff with Kenny Britt and Brian Quick. Not to mention, obviously, these teams, the majority of the time, are going to have subpar offensive lines, given the fact they just aren't the number one overall pick. They were just the worst team in the NFL. However, you contrast this to the Chicago Bears situation. You have DJ Moore. Not only do you have DJ Moore, but at the same time, the Chicago Bears currently have $78 million that they're going to be able to spend in free agency. That's pretty much tied for first in the NFL currently. And if you're looking at the list of picks that this team has, Obviously, they have the 101 in which they will take Caleb Williams. You have the ninth pick overall, which they have a shot to take Rome. They have a shot to take neighbors. We don't exactly know what's going to happen. And then they have whatever pick that they are going to get for trading Justin Fields. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that they're going to be able to get a second rounder. I think that'd be great if they can do that. Just knowing how NFL teams operate, usually it's very hard to extract any kind of real value. But even worst case scenario, if they get a third and a fourth, they're still going to have some firepower to backfill this roster. So... As opposed to a typical team that has the number one overall pick, I think this is a better situation that Caleb Williams will be going into. This uh, quarterback that I actually got to see his first game ever at OU. I completely forgot about this until my buddy brought it up the other day. But that was when he came in, he beat our Texas Longhorns. He took over for Spencer Rattler. And yes, it was a little bit painful, but nonetheless, quarterback with a ton of rushing upside, 11 rushing touchdowns last year, 10 rushing touchdowns the year prior. I think he's the number one overall pick in super flex leagues. Now going to the second overall guy, I think we're going to be looking at Jaden Daniels here. Now with Jaden Daniels, although we were talking about this at the very beginning of the offseason, when you look at a quarterback that has this kind of draft capital, he has job security. If you look at a quarterback that this is this kind of rusher, he is going to be good in fantasy, even if he's bad from a real life perspective. Now, the only instance we've seen a quarterback be selected inside the top three picks in the NFL draft over the past 20 years and not get multiple chances to fail over and over and over again, like Trubisky, like Blake Bortles, the only guy was Trey Lance. So yes, um, I will make the same mistake again with Jaden Daniels if he turns out to be the next Trey Lance. I'm going to take the quarterback with a ton of rushing upside where all historical data tells us he is going to be a starter for years to come. He goes to Washington at pick two in this draft. I mean, it honestly isn't that bad of a situation for Washington either to be this high up. I mean, you have another team that's actually number one right now in the amount of cap space that they have to spend this offseason. They have Dotson, they have McLaurin, could be a whole lot worse. Now, going over to our third player from a super flex perspective, we are going to be looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. 
Now, with Harrison, he's not going to be participating at the NFL Combine, which sucks. I mean, I really want to see the numbers. I want to see him going out there and running. But um, from a uh, uh, real-life perspective, he doesn't need to go to the Combine, right? I mean, right now, if you were looking at sports books, he's minus 200 to go to the Arizona Cardinals, which is exactly where he goes in this mock draft. So that looks to be the most likely landing spot. The only other spots that are really priced in are Chicago, New England, and Washington. So essentially everybody's coming out and they're saying, yes, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be going inside the top three to four picks no matter what. So, I mean, if we're looking at that, I don't think you need to participate at the NFL Combine. You can only really go down from there. This is the number one wide receiver in this draft class with his touchdown rate last year. He's number three in his yards per route run, number four in his dominator, number two in his target percentage per route run. And you look at this, he's 21 years old, so he's one of the youngest wide receivers in the class. He played at Ohio State with another receiver that's going to go in the first round of the 2025 NFL Draft. So you look at it, so okay, he's one of the most productive wide receivers in the class, one of the youngest wide receivers in the class, played alongside some of the toughest competition of any wide receiver in the draft class. Obviously selected as the top five pick here. I think you'd have no hesitation to take him. Now our next guy actually goes ahead of him in the NFL Draft. This would be Drake May in this mock He goes to the New England Patriots here at pick three. If you are looking at May, this is a quarterback that does have rushing upside. 700 rushing yards two years ago at UNC. Nine rushing touchdowns this past year at UNC. I just think it's going to be a very bad situation going over to New England, especially as they move on from Bill Belichick as their head coach. I think it's going to be a transitional period for the New England Patriots. You really have no weapons You have the rushing upside, you have the draft capital, which is why we have to take you here. But obviously your rushing upside isn't as much as what you have with Jaden Daniels. And also you fall behind him in the NFL draft. So we have no business in this mock draft to take him ahead of Daniels. Now, I think what everybody should be rooting for in the NFL draft here is going to be Malik Neighbors to go to the Los Angeles Chargers at pick five. If this happens, it is a dream landing spot He is immediately the number one wide receiver on his team. Going and comparing him to Marvin Harrison Jr., he's number one with his PFF grade this past season. He's number one with his yards per team pass attempt. Number one with his yards per team route run. He is the youngest wide receiver in the draft class. And he played alongside top competition in Brian Thomas Jr. So you look across the board, you go, okay, yeah. Um, uh, yes, all the production measures you want to see, if you age adjust it, it's even better. If you put in the context that he was going up against other top competition, so damn good as a prospect and you have the perfect landing spot going to the chargers. I think this is very, very interesting. Now going over to Brock Bowers, this is a tight end that right now is priced in where he is either going to be going to the chargers, the Colts, the Bengals, or the bears. Plus 200 to go to the Chargers, plus 700 to go to the Colts, plus 800 to go to the Bengals, and plus 1,000 to go to the Bears. This mock draft, he falls to the Cincinnati Bengals at 18. The Bengals actually take another wide receiver round two that we'll talk about later on. But nonetheless, this would be the perfect spot. Now, they do franchise tag T. Higgins, so you will have Higgins that you are dealing with unless they decide to go through and trade Higgins. You're not, it doesn't matter. Bowers is the best prospect that we have seen in the past 10 years outside of Kyle Pitts. This is one of the best passing offenses in the NFL. This is a passing offense that has needed a tight end for so damn long. I I think the last viable tight end they had here was Tyler Eifert, unless I'm mistaken. Now, the interesting thing in this mock draft, which I was surprised to see, and it's the first time I have seen this, is Rome falls outside the top 10 picks of the NFL draft. Here, Rome falls all the way down to pick 17 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, we recently got news that the Jags aren't going to be re-signing Calvin Ridley. If they re-sign him, not only do they have to pay the man, but they also have to give up a second-round pick. Makes a lot of sense for the Jacksonville Jaguars to just let Ridley go. So, Rome would come in. He would immediately slide in as the wide receiver one for Trevor Lawrence. I don't want to say immediately. Maybe Christian Kirk for the first month of the season is still there. But nonetheless, I do think long-term, you should see a Lawrence bounce back. If you head over to my flogfantasy.com rankings, I mean, if you look at mine, I still have Trevor Lawrence as a top 24 pick in Superflex startups. I know the community rankings and everybody uses the site is really low on Lawrence, but if you filter by expert, if you filter by my own rankings, you'll see I, I still like him. I think he is going to have a massive bounce back for years to come. 
And of course, if you want to check out all our Dynasty Fantasy Football rankings on flogfantasy.com, not only are mine there, but pretty much everybody you watch on YouTube, plus all our premium content, plus our Dynasty Trade Calculator, plus our Dynasty Trade Fund. You can find all of that with the link in the description and the comment section. Code Flock will get 30% off in his subscription. And if you use code Flock, yours truly will break down your Dynasty Fantasy Football team in a podcast. Make sure you take advantage of that. But nonetheless, Rome doesn't really have the same metrics as you would see with neighbors or Harrison, but the difference between the guys are Rome is a wide receiver that played alongside two guys that are going to go inside the top 100 picks of this year's NFL draft. So he had serious competition. Yes. He stayed all four years at Washington, but he only played like four games as a true freshman, just given the fact that they had a real COVID season where nobody actually played. Now going over to our next spot, I would not be opposed with J.J. McCarthy going pick 13 in this mock draft if you were in a super flex format to go ahead and to take J.J. McCarthy ahead of Rome. Now, of course, there is a big difference in a super flex format that's a 10-team league, a 12-team league, a 14-team league. If you're playing in a 10-team super flex league, quarterback's going to be very easy to come by. I mean, everybody's going to have, on average, three to four starting quarterbacks. And if you were to go out there and try to trade for Baker Mayfield, you're not going to get anything, Right. So, I mean, ultimately, the more teams that you have in your super flex league, the harder these quarterbacks are going to be to come across. So if you're playing in a 14-team super flex format, I would take J.J. McCarthy over Rome, to be honest. I may take him over Bowers in a 14-team league. Now, this is for a 12-team format and a 10-team league. I wouldn't even consider it. But nonetheless, with McCarthy, he has some rushing upside. I'm not going to act like he's Jaden Daniels. He would go to a spot where he presumably starts immediately with a decent roster around him with weapons like Devontae Adams. Now, obviously, being pick 13 doesn't give you the same kind of job security that you have with the top three selection. You see that with Kenny Pickett, where Kenny Pickett's that mid-round one pick. And unlike the guys historically, such as Blake Bortles, such as Mitchell Trubisky, that are going to be able to fail throughout their entire rookie deal. If you're in that mid-round one and you fail like, Kenny Pickett, you pretty much get cast aside after the first two years. So it does change the range of outcomes here a bit, but still you pretty much be guaranteed to start immediately. Now going over to Brian Thomas Jr. Finds himself in Houston at pick 23. Now this would be a beautiful spot, right? I mean, with Brian Thomas Jr., the metrics aren't great, but it's because he played alongside Malik Neighbors. So, I mean, of course, you're going to be looking at his yards per route run. You're going to be looking at his targets. They're going to be down, but he is a wide receiver that's going to get drafted at 21 years old. This is an option that pretty much everybody in the film community is on. And if he goes round one in the NFL draft, I mean, as someone who's projected out stand at 6'4", probably just have to go ahead and take him. If he were to go over to Houston, I just think it'd be so interesting to see how people would project things out between him, Nico Collins, and Tank Tell. Because to be completely honest with you, I have no idea what people would be looking to do. Now, going over to our next guy, we will have Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman goes pick 26 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it would be a very funny pick. I mean, you would assume that Tampa takes him only if Mike Evans is gone, only if Evans goes to KC or whatever the hell may happen. On paper, Keon Coleman's not a good prospect from his targets per route, his yards per route, his yards per team pass attempt, his PFF grade. It's all bad. But the man is a freak athlete. He played alongside another wide receiver that's going to go top 100 in the NFL draft in Johnny Wilson. And he is only 20 years old at the time of the NFL draft. So the production's not good. Historically, if a wide receiver produces like this, you really can't be on them. And more likely than not, they're going to work out. But of course, you always have to take into consideration the context. You always have to make your own adjustments. So young, super freak athlete, had competition at FSU. I think we can overlook some of those other red flags. And he would go round one. Obviously, if he falls to round two or maybe even round three, this is going to be so much lower than this in my rankings. Now, going over to our next two guys, um, I'm going to throw Michael Penix Jr., and Bo Nix here. So if you're looking at where Vegas is currently projecting out these guys to go, Penix is priced in to either be a Seahawk, Falcon, Viking, or Raider. Bo Nix is there with the Broncos, Raiders, Vikings, Patriots, Saints, or Falcons. Here, they both go early round two. You have the Giants taking Penix, which honestly I think would be a great move, right? I mean, you take Penix, if he's bad, who cares? It's not like you took him inside the top 10 picks. 
If Daniel Jones works out, great. Who cares? Sit on Michael Penix. If Daniel Jones doesn't, then you at least have a backup option where you can just see what Penix can do in the second half of the season and know if you have a quarterback going forward to 2025 or not. The Vikings taking Bo Nix would be an interesting spot as well in that you assume that they re-sign Kirk Cousins, but Cousins' older quarterback coming off a of torn Achilles. Maybe you take Bo Nix and you get a quarterback that can take over in two to three years. I don't know. My hesitation, and I'm sure the hesitation for everybody else watching this video, is despite these guys just being absurdly talented last season compared to other quarterbacks in college football, um, Bo Nix is 24 years old. Michael Penix is about to be 24. Both these guys are older than Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts has played three years in the NFL, and people are willing to write him off. Yet he is younger than these two QBs. So obviously it's going to be the main thing everybody is looking at. Now going over to our next guy, we're going to have Xavier Worthy. Goes pick 34 to the New England Patriots. Hogan Morris, y'all know I, I want to root for my guy. I am worried that he's Marvin Mims. Breaks out as a true freshman. Looks great early on. Pretty much never gets better. Would be a good landing spot, though, in that you have no competition. And at the same time, they take Drake May. So you possibly have the quarterback situation solved. Now, 43, we're going to go Troy Franklin. I actually like Troy Franklin as a prospect more than Xavier Worthy. I, I like him as a prospect more than Keon Coleman. If you go to my rankings on flogfantasy.com, you'll see I also have him ranked ahead of Penix. And I also have him ranked ahead of Knicks. My issue is the landing spot just looks really bad here. He goes to the Atlanta Falcons. Makes sense from a real life perspective. I think this would be a great move from Atlanta. But the issue is you're playing alongside Drake London. You're playing alongside Kyle Pitts. We, we don't really know what the quarterback situation is going to be like. We don't know what the passing volume is there. So love the player. Would really hate the landing spot. Um, Adonai Mitchell finds himself in a pretty good situation now. I made an in-depth video breaking down Adonai Mitchell earlier on. I, I'm Hoping that you've already seen that. If not, I, I just really don't like a lot of these things. He was dead last or second to last in this class with 1.68 yards per route run. He was at the bottom, essentially, in his targets per route run. 1.78 yards per team pass 10. PFF graders didn't even like him. He was at 74. He's pretty much a field stretching wide receiver that may be better from an NFL perspective than he is from a fantasy football perspective. I don't know. He goes to Carolina. It's a wide open depth chart. Maybe Bryce Young turns out to be decent. We'll go Ladd McConkey here at 38. Very difficult to evaluate this wide receiver. He ran 148 routes last year, right? So I, I can't really sit here and say from a metrics perspective, this is what he looks like. We just don't necessarily know. On um, PFFs, high on him, 11th highest PFF grade in this class. I mean, I know a lot of film guys really like him, and he does project out to be that late round one, early round two pick. Goes to the Tennessee Titans at 38, which I think would be a great fit for both the team and the player, though. Now, Malachi Corley coming in at 60. Not someone I'm as high on. Obviously, this is a wide receiver that operates a lot closer to the line of scrimmage. He dominates with targets, right? He had 32% of his routes leading to a target this past year at Western Kentucky, but a couple different things. One, you played at Western Kentucky. Two, you're an older prospect. Three, it was a lot around the line of scrimmage. A ton of screen usage. I believe the most screen usage in this entire class. So I don't want to say he's Brian Edwards. Obviously, he's not Brian Edwards. But we've seen it before where someone comes out and, yeah, they're super productive in college. And you love how they look on paper if you're just looking at their raw production measures. But then you look at where that production came from and you go, okay, these are routes that probably aren't going to work in the NFL. But this is a beautiful landing spot going to Buffalo. Now, Roman Wilson will be our next guy here at 49, taken by the Cincinnati Bengals. So it would be interesting. I mean, there is that outside chance, obviously, that Cincinnati is still looking to move T. Higgins. If they were to take Roman Wilson, move T. Higgins, then I think you'd maybe be a little more excited about this. Then Jermaine Burton goes to the Kansas City Chiefs at 64. The Chiefs are obviously in a market for a wide receiver. This is a team that has Rasheed Rice, and Rice is someone that I have in a lot of my own dynasty leagues. I didn't even like him as a prospect. I was just drafting him over and over and over again because he was Kansas City Chief. And to be fair, obviously it worked out, but at the same time, he was utilized a little bit more as a gadgety type player where he's not running super far downfield, right? He's not ever getting behind the safeties. More so being used as a running back that's kind of out there on the line of scrimmage and getting everything within the first five yards of his route. Now, Jalen Polk will be our next guy. He goes 50. Jalen Polk, another one of these wide receivers where it's very difficult to look at his production profile, but 
played alongside with two wide receivers that are going inside the top 100 picks this year. And one of those guys in Rome is going to be going uh, maybe inside the top 10 picks of the NFL draft. So to look at his production profile, it's very, very deceiving. And obviously you kind of have to trust the film guys on it. And it goes pick 50 to the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a team that needs a wide receiver three. Um, we're going to go Xavier Leggett at 34. Now I don't like Leggett, but he goes in this mock draft and the running backs don't. So don't go to the comment section and scream. Oh my gosh, he forgot Jonathan Brooks. Oh my gosh, he forgot Trey Benson. Of course, I have those guys ranked ahead of players like Xavier Leggett on flogfantasy.com. I'm only going to be selecting the guys that go in this NFL mock draft. So if you want to see my thoughts on the running backs, check it out on flogfantasy.com. And also, we, of course, will be covering that on the channel, especially as we get those combine numbers, which I'm very excited about. But real quick, let me also run through how we'd be looking at this from a one quarterback perspective. In a one QB league, we'd be going Harrison, Neighbors, Bowers, Rome, Brian Thomas Jr., Keon Coleman. I think you'd have those top six guys and then beyond there. I think you could mix in the quarterbacks with Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, seven through nine. Then we're going to be going back to the wide receivers with Xavier, Franklin, Adonai, Ladd, Malachi. Then you can mix in JJ McCarthy. Then afterwards, we're going to go right back to the wide receivers and Roman Wilson, Jermaine Bertain, Jalen Polk, Xavier Leggett. And just if we were only ranking guys that went in this mock draft, obviously at that point, we'd be going with the last two quarterbacks because they went and the running backs didn't. But from an actual dynasty perspective, hell no, we are not taking these quarterbacks in a one QB league ahead of those other top running backs. But I think that's all I got for you for this video. If you enjoyed it, please go down there, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football. And of course, if you want to get access to all my Dynasty Fantasy Football premium content, all the premium content of all your favorite creators, so many rookie draft guides that we have on the site that have an absurd amount of information and data, plus all the Dynasty rankings, Dynasty trade, calculator, Dynasty trade, yada, yada, yada. Flockfantasy.com, promo code Flock will get you 30% off any subscription. Yours truly will break down your Dynasty Fantasy Football team in a podcast, and you'll get that free week trial as well with code Flock. But I think that's a God for you. Really appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day, and I'll be good to see you with the video tomorrow.